Well, let's get more analysis on this. We're joined by Andy McGuffey, who is a former EU official in Bosnia. Many thanks for joining us, Andy. Good afternoon. Now, Bosnia has attempted to join before, but the EU has knocked them back. Is, what, what is different about this time? Uh, now it comes in the context of a reform agenda having been agreed between Bosnia and Herzegovina and the European Union. So there is a clear shopping list, if you like, of the things Bosnia and Herzegovina has to do to move forward to have this application considered by the Council of the EU. There was a progress report back in November by the European Commission where they concluded that the country was back on the reform track. But this was actually rejected by the public, wasn't it? I think there are different opinions uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina about the commitment of political leadership uh, to reform, uh, some of which are well founded. Uh, but overall, uh, the European Union uh, has made some very creative uh, steps uh, towards Bosnia and Herzegovina over the past year. I think, as your report said, some of those, but not all, have been implemented and, and a lot is outstanding. Well, let's talk a bit about the challenges facing the country. I, I was reading a report by the uh, Human Rights Watch saying that uh, when it comes to the protection of basic human rights in the country, it, it is incredibly critical of those human rights. Eurostat says it's one of the poorest European countries by GDP per capita in Europe. I mean, is, it, is, is it Bosnia just hoping to join the EU to solve some of these problems? Uh, in some ways, that is the answer. They are very, very significant problems for the country. Uh, there is a big mountain for Bosnia and Herzegovina to climb. But the question is, in what, what framework is that best addressed uh, on its own, um, in an environment where all the other countries of the region are moving towards the European Union, such as Serbia, such as Montenegro, such as Albania, um, or is it in the framework of the European Union as well? And I think this is why the European Union wants to help Bosnia and Herzegovina as much as it can because those sorts of challenges, despite all the things, despite all the challenges we see the EU itself facing, are best addressed through that big process of reform that only the European Union can provide in the region. It's interesting that you say that the EU wants to help them. I mean, the EU is facing a number of challenges evident uh, in terms of like the migration problems, its own economic problems. Realistically, how long, how, how, how far off is Bosnia from being accepted? Well, I would agree with the Bosnian foreign minister as quoted in your report who said it's very difficult uh, to know how long the process will take, particularly I would add because of the very complex constitutional and governance structure of Bosnia and Herzegovina in which it is so easy uh, for different players to block processes. We're not going to have in Bosnia and Herzegovina a normative process that we've seen, for example, in Croatia or that we might see unfolding in Serbia. I think for any country with a so-called normal constitutional setup, you will be looking uh, between five to ten years uh, for it to uh, make progress towards membership of the EU. Now, in the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina, what that underlines is that it's going to require a huge amount of discipline from its political leaders, uh, a huge amount of effort from its civil service and its institutions to make this process go as fast as it can. OK, Andy McGuffey, uh, many thanks for joining us, a former EU official in Bosnia. Thank thanks for your thoughts.